Hello and welcome to the recap of our Code Buddies live coding session where we were creating a music app with JavaScript and SVG. Code Buddies is a global community of people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. During our hangout, we worked on an open source project which is available on GitHub, github.com slash Briley slash Tonitz. Uh, we may end up uh, changing the scope of this project so that it may take a different name at some point. And the initial goal was to create an SVG interface for musical exploration using this neo riemannian Tonitz map. You can find more about this on Wikipedia, but essentially what it is are, it consists of notes in relationships to one another, uh, such as major and minor triads, which are common chords that are, you find in almost every type of music. So this is an intentionally designed network of note and chord relations that help you kind of explore uh, new sounds and new melodic and harmonic progressions. So in order to create the uh, a sort of a basic um, Tonitz grid, I started with SVG edit, and I just wanted to start with a quick triad uh, of three notes, C, E, and G. We don't have them labeled here. I'll have to get the labels in there. When T the idea is that when you touch the note, it'll play the single note, and when you touch the triangle, it'll play the triad, the chord together. In order to make the sounds, we're using a library called Tone.js. It's a framework for creating interactive music in the browser. Uh, it's a really powerful framework. We're only using it to the very basic extent of just uh, triggering notes and then telling those notes to be quiet. Uh, I've got a little demo here. We ended up actually uh, during the Twitch live stream trying out a couple of different geometries just so we could see uh, how things work. So if you look here, we've got a C, E, G, B, D, all in the same octave. Uh, I can change the geometry so this D is uh, actually the ninth instead of the second note. When you press the star, it plays the chord. So you can kind of start making cool grooves and whatnot. Again, the idea initially was that you would not be stuck to one just key and chord, but you'd actually be able to explore and go out in, in, uh, in this tonal space. Uh, we may end up continuing that path, we may not. But anyway, let's take a look at the code real quick. So it consists mainly of three files. A couple of SVG files, that's on SVG and the star SVG. Um, let me just actually show you the source for the, the star SVG. This is the interesting part and, and relevant. So it consists of these SVG shapes, circles, and a star. And each shape has some properties here. I'm using SVG's XML editor to add a class and a data property called data-notes. Uh, keep Keep this in mind because this is central to how it works. Essentially, you can add arbitrary data to XML objects, HTML, you know, and S, you know, SVG and HTML included. So, we've got a data note. This represents E, G, B, and D. So, when I look here at the star, we have the class of a chord, whereas this was the class of a note, and the data notes for the chord is C. D, E, G, and B. They're all in the fourth octave. You can change this around. So essentially we're binding our data to the SVG. That's the main goal here. And whatever the shape is, whatever forms it takes, the, it'll, the data will be embedded here. So then let's take a look at how we access those data properties in JavaScript. Uh, I have some styles that may or may not be necessary, but what we wanted to do is embed those uh, SVGs into the HTML, but without having to copy and paste it every time. We wanted the SVG to be kept in its own file. So with the help of some uh, level two learn for life or level two on um, Twitch, we did a couple of experiments. I guess I can clean this one up. It's not in use anymore. To embed the iframe for the star SVG and a recipe to hopefully make the iframe responsive. Uh, if this works, then I'll leave it in. We want it to work in phones and tablets of various sizes. Uh, we'll come back to that later. But essentially, all the code is down here, and this also could be moved into a separate file. So what we do here is create a 
polysynth, which poly means multiple and synth means synthesizer. So the synthesizer is capable of playing multiple notes at the same time. Here it can play four, which I actually just realized might be problematic for our chord, which consists of five tones. So I'll have to just think about that for a second. But, uh, hmm, I don't notice the difference. Okay, so then essentially what we do here is grab this tonnets, which is essentially the iframe is called tonnets because it was intended to re represent a tonnets um, tone network, uh, which in any case, we're deviating from that. Uh, from there, we are adding an event listener. When it's ready, when the SVG has been loaded and rendered in here, we're going to attach all the sounds to it. So this attached sounds basically takes this SVG so it goes inside of the tonic tonnets iframe and grabs the document element. And so we have a reference to that. Then it attaches note sounds and chord sounds, which there's only one. So let's take a look at this function. The note sound takes this SVG passed in from the parent scope, grabs the notes. So if you recall, all of those SVG elements have classes. And if I bring up Inkscape, Let's see, Inkscape, uh, there we go. The class here is note, and the class here is chord. So this is essentially regular CSS selector. Sorry, that's the uh, source code link appearing back there. So say, give me all the notes, everything with class note, and it gives us a list back. And so for each of those notes, we're gonna add some event listeners. When I press down the note, when I release the note. So it'll actually sustain the note if I hold it. Now the play note just says, okay, for the event target, the item I'm pressing, give me the data set containing the notes. Again, this is just a data property called notes and log it out, so I need to clean that up. And this polysynth trigger the attack, start playing that note in the fourth octave. So I'm here hard coding the octave. I have to figure out how to handle octaves. And when my mouse up event is triggered, release that note, let go of it. So attack, release. In between attack and release is a sustain and decay. We're not modulating that. In the future, we might work with those. So that's how that works. Similarly with chords, let's go ahead and just open and attach chords. Um, so here I've got some remnants. I was running an experiment and just hard coding the chords. But we grab the SVG, inside the SVG element, we grab the chords anything with a class of chord, which is just this one. But for each of those, so that we, might, we can have other chord elements, we're going to add two event listeners, mouse up and down again. I believe these two functions, attach chord sounds and attach note sounds, will be unified into a single function because they're really the same. Uh, but I'm taking things incrementally, a little bit at a time. So for play a chord, because there's just a little bit of difference, we're gonna grab multiple notes instead of a single note. Now, it doesn't matter really. Uh, I think that if I run this split on a string with a single character, uh, it'll just return that character in a list. I'll have to do some experimentation and it was getting kind of late, so I wanted to call it a night. In any case, we grab those notes as a list. And in this case, so here, another difference was that I hard-coded the octave here, but I didn't want to go through a bunch of um, code to add the octaves in there, so I just put them right in the SVG. Take a quick look at that one more time. If you see this star path, all the notes have their octave information there. So that was just a convenience. Uh, again, this is just a work in progress, taking things incrementally. Uh, but once I've got that, we'll trigger the attack for those chords, and on the mouse up, release it. That's all, not too many lines of code. And I think there's a lot of room for improvement, cleaning up, consolidating code, you know, refactoring it down uh, to improve readability and maintainability. And, you know, our minds started kind of going very uh, broadly. A lot of ideas started coming up, uh, different geometries we could show here, forms, ways that you can move between different geometries. Um, this Tone.js has a lot of capabilities for changing the sound, uh, the, ta the timbre of the synthesizer. You can use envelopes, uh, you can loop over things. Um, 
it's got effects so there's quite a lot and our main idea here is just to keep the user interface really simple intuitive and to take a paradigm of sort of a direct manipulation where you're able to actually interact directly with these tones the tone topology and any kind of uh, envelopes or anything uh, effects wise should be immediately apparent what it's doing visually to the end user uh, those are basic guidelines again we're really uh, <laughs> at a nascent level this idea but it's open source if there's other ideas or anyone who wants to fork this project they're welcome to take a look and i'm also open to suggestions so thank you very much for your time again this was a code buddies hangout we really hope to see you around the code buddies community there's a lot of really uh, talented uh, people here and everyone's teaching and learning from one another thanks again for watching and have a great day